Hello, I'm John McRae and today's text is the excellent and very enjoyable musical play Blood Brothers. As you probably know, it's set in Liverpool. It was written in the 1980s, first performed for a school. So it's always had the context of school and education. It is absolutely and completely a growing up drama. But the Blood Brothers are twins who are separated at birth, one brought up in a wealthy middle class family and one brought up in a poor working class family. That allows many people to say that the main theme is class. No, one of the main themes is class. One of the themes is society as it is. One of the themes is family. One of the themes is lack of communication. One of the things that the play is about and is still very relevant is how the less well-off suffer while the better off do, well, better. I associate it right now with people like Marcus Rashford and what he's doing for school kids and school dinners and school literacy and giving people books and things like that. Because the kind of social deprivation that Willie Russell was pointing at in Liverpool in the 80s has not gone away. Now, call that the social context of the play, if you like. But it also means that this play is actually very political. The mere fact that it is writing about social deprivation it's writing about conflicts with the law. It's writing about people who steal in order to survive. That gives it political resonance, which is every bit as true today as it was in 1983 when it was first staged. The amazing thing, though, is that a play about largely working class people in Liverpool, people in Liverpool don't speak with a received pronunciation, people in Liverpool are not considered by the London culturati to be greatly cultured, although Liverpool has been, of course, uh, one of the great cities of culture. It is a city of immense culture and great history and the word slavery is never mentioned as part of this city because the context is rather more universal and there wasn't such an awareness of the problems of slavery in the history of the big cities in the 80s as there is now. But the point I'm coming to is this play, this musical if you like, I'll keep calling it either a musical or a play, ran for more than 10,000 performances in the West End of London. It ran on Broadway. It's been produced worldwide. Therefore, it's obviously doing something which transcends that limited school, Liverpool, working class context. Like many great plays from the Greek theatre 600 years before Christ to last week and the soap operas on telly. It's about family. Many people would argue that almost all the greatest plays in the history of theatre are about family. These are brothers. One brother is given by the desperate mother to a mother who is desperate to have children and can't. The first mother is the cleaner for that mother. That's the social gap illustrated in one image. And this is something that Willie Russell is very, very good at. Very economical images. If it was a novel, it would need two paragraphs to tell you that. The mother goes to clean 
the other one can't have children, they make the deal to take the kid. And she promises, of course, never to see him again. And of course, you know, that's not going to happen. Now, the way that Willie Russell does this in theatrical, technical terms is very simple, and very brilliant, and involves what we know as a framework device. The framework is that there is a narrator who is the link between the audience and the action. Again, this is something that goes back to the ancient Greek theatre. In ancient Greek theatre, you had a chorus who kind of commented on the action. They didn't always push the action forward the way this narrator does, but occasionally they nudged it, mostly they commented on it. Well, this narrator does all of that. But he is a very deliberately theatrical device in order to break the fourth wall. So, write that phrase down. To break the fourth wall. In terms of realism, we know that theatre isn't real. It's something on a stage and they tend to make three walls and the fourth wall is the proscenium arch and we are sitting in the audience watching it. And we just agree to suspend our disbelief and we are watching this action on the stage just as we watch something on TV thinking that it's real, imagining that it's real, imagining these are real characters and it's happening to them. The essence of that belief is that the characters be sympathetic, identifiable in some way, that the audience, to put it simply, can relate to the characters. And I think we all find in Blood Brothers that we can relate like mad to the characters, both to the boys and to the mothers and to a lot of the other smaller roles, the cameos, the caricatures that appear. Relatability, empathy, sympathy. These are three enormously important characteristics of a good drama. Relatability, empathy and sympathy.